So what happens there, so we, we'll, we'll get to this one, but <clears throat> with regards to drugs and alcohol, do they make you happy? I'm sorry, from what you've heard, <laughs> do they make you happy? Yeah. Of course they do. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, we're supposed to say, no, <laughs> they don't feel good at all, they just ruin your life. You can do both. You can, it can feel good and ruin your life. I mean, isn't that the, the lesson of significant others in a lot of, in a lot of ways? Is that kind of the lesson from food in a lot of ways? It can make it can make you feel happy, but it can also ruin your life. I mean, I mean that's almost part of the of the joy of it, really. I mean, think about that. There's this natural there's this natural self destructive tendency in us, and even if we understand. So, for example, um, like I said before, you shouldn't eat anything that that, crinkle, that crinkles when you open it. You know what I mean? Like if you're opening up a, something and you hear that. That means what's inside is probably really bad for you because it's got that, that, that packaging because it has to preserve whatever's inside. And so whatever's in there is like probably like chips or something highly processed. Or, so we know it's bad for us. And yet we sit there and we go like, oh my gosh, diabetes, and we go, oh, we start eating it anyway. Now granted, you have to eat a lot of it to get diabetes. It isn't just like one chip. But <clears throat> it is something I think about. Like, so I mentioned before, my dad worked at McDonald's my whole life when I was growing up, and he ended up with type 2 diabetes. And that's the one that you, that you give yourself, not the one that you're born with. No, the one you're born with, I think, is just type 1. I think everyone's born with, not everyone's born with that. People with type 1 are born with type 1 diabetes, but type 2 is the kind that you give yourself by just eating garbage for most of your life, and not exercising, and, 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 and. And so I always think about that, like at some point there was a, there was a cheeseburger, there was one last cheeseburger that my dad was sitting there looking at, and he goes, oh, and as soon as he goes, that's the diabetes one, you know? It's kind of like, um, I was telling you, I don't know if I was telling you guys, a friend of mine was in a hospice for alcohol, but I tell you about this? Did I tell you? Okay. Yeah, so she died last Friday, and she's only 28 years old, and you know, she was cirrhosis of the liver. I mean, how, I mean, the amount of alcohol that you have to drink to, to drink yourself to death at 28 years old is phenomenal. You know, it's absolutely phenomenal. Anyway, she, um, she, at some point was sitting there and had a drink, and it was. And she didn't know it, of course. But I wonder if she had been told what she would have done if she'd been told if you take that last drink, you'll be dead in three years. And if she was still would have gone. I don't know, I think there's an argument to be made that a lot of us would do that still. Because there's all kinds of things like that. Like, um, like um, I mean, certain drugs like, like heroin. I don't know anybody who's ever tried heroin a few times and been like, yeah, that's enough for me. You know, for the most part, you try it three or four times and, that's, and you can look forward to the end of, of, of your life on that. You know? And it's something that I consider a lot because I think back to a lot of the musicians who I really admired when I was growing up. And, I mean, Jim Morrison, dead, probably heroin. Um, Jimi Hendrix, you know, choked on his own vomit. You know, he bless you. Um, Kurt Cobain uh, did an overdose. Well, he probably overdosed before he got lead poisoning. Uh, Lane Staley, dead from that. Um, you know, um, I, <laughs> Yeah, right, lead poisoning? Yeah. Um, Brad No from, uh, from, from Sublime. There's all these guys who I... Who I, I you know, listen to growing up, and a whole bunch of them de died from these things. And so there's always that thing that kind of warned you, warned, warned you off of it. Now, while they were doing those things, did it make them happy? Well, of course it does. There's a reason that drugs are really, really popular, because they feel absolutely fantastic. And anybody who tells you otherwise is probably doing you know, a horrible disservice, because then what happens is everyone's like, terrible, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. And you try it, and you're like, wow. Like, someone once described heroin to me as... Um, uh, falling asleep on a cloud, something like that. I'm like, really? And that makes it sound so appealing, you know. But then I had, to, but I, I looked at him, and he's like missing teeth, he had scars up and down his arms, you know. And, and he'd been off of heroin for a little bit, but he was completely messed up physically. And you sit there and you go like, huh? It was made in a if the stuff gets processed in a lab, and you inject it straight into your bloodstream. You know, that's, that's, that's a weird thing to do, but. Of course it makes you feel happy at the time. In fact, that's part of the danger of it. Part of the danger of these things is that we do them to an extreme. It's, it's actually the reason I don't do drugs, because if I did drugs, I know myself, I would do all of them. If I, did, if I drank alcohol, I've had alcohol once in my life, 
I know myself. If I had alcohol, if I, so if I, got, if I, I used to drinking alcohol, I would drink all of it. And a lot of people say, oh, not me, I can control myself. Maybe, 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 maybe. But I wonder how much, of, how much of your life you've really examined yourself to be able to sit there and go, hmm, maybe, maybe get, a, maybe get a, a, a can of Pringles and really try eating just one. And then see how much self-control you really have, you know? Or better yet, have some ice cream. Don't, don't put it into a bowl, eat it out of, the, out of the tub and see how much you eat, you know? And uh, we, we can see how much self-control we really have. Or even just look at our, our daily lifestyles. Yeah, our, you know, do we, do we eat the stuff that we know is bad for us and continuously eat it? Then we probably don't have that kind of self-control to, to try Turkish black mule heroin just once and see how it is. You, know, you have to know yourself. You have to know yourself. And in these things here, we have to understand that the things that make us actually feel happy are the things that lead us into harm. And, and Kai is right. Um, anybody have heard this song before? so terribly unobservant. Mm -hmm. It was the first song I played when you guys started working. And yeah, and he sings along, and, he, and he's singing specifically, he says, at, at the record company meeting, on their hands a dead star. That's their first line. And then they're, and they're celebrating, they're all, you know, yeah, there's, a, you know there's, a, there's a dead star, they're happy about it, because now, once they're dead, they can start to repackage their stuff, you know, unreleased demos, alternate versions. And it's actually a funny thing coming from this band, the Smiths, because they were notorious for doing this, even while they were together. They were still releasing like you know best of compilations, you know best of compilation one and two, even though they only had a couple records out. And then they would um, release a single, and then they would re-release the single with different B-sides, so people would, would would get that one. They were they were just notorious for, for having done that. So having him sing about that's kind of a funny thing. But he's poking fun at himself at the same time, poking fun at the record labels. And what's funny is we think about that with the record companies. You know they use their stars, of course. And what do stars do? Use the record label. If you didn't, if there was no rec if you didn't have to use the record label, then why wouldn't you just do it on your own? Of course, there's the, the the record in, the, the music industry is nothing without their stars. Of course, the stars are nothing without the industry. Because if they were, there would be no industry, especially today. If people say, "Oh, you can do it all online but on your own," go for it. How come none of the major stars do that? And then we can dig and we go. Well, there's this one group that you've heard of before, but nobody else has heard of them really, or maybe a few of you have heard about them, but for the most part, they're not, you know, they're not a, a big sensation. And you might say, yeah, but they're making you a bunch of money because they don't have a label. Well, then that's the question. Do you want to make a bunch of money, or do you want to be huge? And let's face it, most people get into this music thing because they want to, you know, it's one of those two things, it makes it make a bunch of money or be famous. And I wonder if you had to choose which one of those you would choose. I don't want to, I wonder, I don't know, I wonder. Might you make a famous homeless man? Yeah. Yeah, it wouldn't it? It's half, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm thinking about a guy who did that. Um, he was a, he was a um, you can go look this up. He was a guy who he was homeless and he had a sign and he had a, uh, I guess, an incredible radio voice. If you remember this? And, and the guy, he would talk like this. Wow, you, you sound like a, sound like, and so, so they made him famous. Anybody know what happened to that guy? He was on the streets because of drugs and alcohol. So they got him a job, he got a radio job, yeah, he threw it away. Drugs and alcohol, went right back to it. Because the thing that makes us, and this is the word right here, big on it, makes us feel happy, leads us, in, you know, leads us headlong into harm. And it's funny because the thing that he is talking about there is fame. You know, because you know, he acknowledges, I mean, his whole reason, by the way, the singer as a, as a background, his whole reason for starting a band, he said, was that he wanted to be a pop star. He said that he was thinking about his career choices and where he wanted to go in life, and then one day he just said, you know what, I'm gonna, he told a friend of his, I made a decision for my career finally. And they're like, oh good, you're finally gonna get a job. And he said, no, I'm gonna become a pop star. And so he started a band and he became a pop star. That's exactly what he did. Um, so all of the things that he was pursuing in life, he got. And yet, when you watch the guy and you see interviews with the guy, he doesn't particularly seem very happy. He doesn't seem especially miserable. If you listen to his lyrics, you'd think he was entirely miserable. But, uh, you know, I don't think that you can listen to one of their records and not say, wow, that song is about me, or that song is exactly what I'm thinking they're going through. That's their appeal. So he recognizes this thing that what makes us, you know, feel happy, not be happy, but feel happy, is exactly the step that leads us over to here. You know, like I think about going back to Kurt Cobain. Um, him and his, him and the bass player from Nirvana, they had uh, they had planned in life to start a custodial company, to 
to clean office buildings. And they actually made flyers for it. They're going to do their own business of just cleaning offices. And you sit there and you think, like, imagine if, they never, if Nirvana never got their break. Kurt Cobain would be alive today, probably. Because he wouldn't have had the money to do heroin. He wouldn't have had the, even the, the, the need for it, actually, I guess, in a lot of ways. And it would just be him and this guy in Seattle cleaning offices, to, you, know, you know, playing, playing you know, bars on the weekend or something like that, probably doing lead belly covers or something like that. And you think about how many people out there are exactly like that, where there was one little thing that if you got differently, they'd have been the biggest thing in the world. Or some of the biggest things in the world right now, who if they just hadn't been in a certain place on a certain day, they wouldn't be where they are today. Yeah. Or if you hadn't had that, if, if, if one day you hadn't had that one cheeseburger that pushed you over the line, or that one drink that, that led to your ruin. You know, life is so much about those little things, those little inches, and it's so hard to figure out the things that are going to make us happy and the things that are going to lead us into harm. And it, it, a lot of times it really is, did you get away with it or not? Maybe you got away with that one drink that one time, or maybe you got away with that one cheeseburger that one time. Maybe, you know? Or maybe you think you did, and then five years from now, like what happened with my friend, or well, four years later, she, she kind of decides, I'm going to get my life together. And she got her life together. She was engaged, she had a job, everything in her life was now straightened out. By the way, growing up, she was in foster care her whole life. So she never really had a, a, I don't know, a chance, but man, I mean, if you're looking at, I mean, if you're starting off your life and you're going to play your life on veteran mode, that's the, one you're gonna, that, that's the life you're going to choose, the one that she did. And it was a trip, so I was, I, I, I was thinking about this. Um, last year, she won a beauty contest. She was a, she did, like pageants and stuff like that. So just one year ago, she won a beauty pageant, and then a year later, she dies. Why? Because of some decisions that she made three years ago. You know, it's a, it's, it's a weird thing how this life thing can happen sometimes. And so these makes us feel happy. It doesn't it isn't necessarily the thing that makes us happy. Unfortunately, a lot of times. We don't know the things that are going to make us happy. How do we know what makes us happy? Well, you stumble into it. You do something, and you go, huh, that made me happy. What is it that you're doing? I don't know. Um, I don't know. Cleaning a house. Who knows? You know, planting a garden. Walking down the street. Standing in the ocean. Who knows? And then, you, and then sometimes what you're going to find is that the thing that made you happy today isn't going to have that same impact tomorrow. Maybe today you go and stand in the ocean, and then tomorrow you go and do the same thing to try to feel the same way, and it's not the same thing. And so we're perpetually kind of going through life, just like slamming into happiness here and there, wherever we can. And hopefully it's a thing that we're able to repeat. But this idea that we can pursue it, and we know that, that the end of it is going to be something great, maybe, maybe. But even the case of like what he's talking about, and by the way, you hear this from a lot of artists. You know, it's one of the things that gives me pause because we look at them and we're like, oh my God, shut up. You have fame and you have wealth and you have all these things that you, you know, everything you've ever wanted in life. Yeah, but just because you want something doesn't mean you should have it. There's a big difference between the things that you want and the things that you need. And I mean, there's a, I mean, think about the things that you want. I don't know if anybody in here wants to eat a whole chocolate cake. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna if anybody in here wants to, to, I don't know, go skydiving without a parachute, to make it more interesting, you know? But that's not the thing that you need. I wonder, sometimes in life, there's a, there's a person who you want, but it certainly is not the person that you need. That, that person who you want, I mean, think about that. Everybody whose life has been ruined by, by a significant other, and by the way, I use that, I mean, half facetiously. Your life isn't ruined by a significant other. Your life is ruined by your engagement with that significant other. In other words, they may have done a bunch of things that ruined your life, but you went along for the ride. And you certainly made your own bed. Even, even if they brought you the sheets, you certainly made the bed. And we have to acknowledge that. But maybe then at some point, that was a person who you really, really wanted. That's what's funny to hear like, people who break up and just absolutely hate each other and just run their mouth. First off, they probably don't really hate each other that much. But, you know, there's something else that, that's underneath. It's not the person, it's the situation. But at some point, that was the only person in the world for you. That was the only person in the universe. That was, you, you know, you're posting that person on your Instagram. This is my world. You know? <clears throat> well, your world got hit by a cop, <laughs> by a comet, man. <laughs> your world got hit by an asteroid. It's time to, time to reset. You know? 
That's why it's dangerous also to put all, to put our, all of our everything into anything. Nothing should be your everything. That's a really basic thing to be. If, if, if any one thing is your everything, you know, it shouldn't be so one-dimensional. Um, I wonder, how, I wonder how, how interesting we can be to another person if, you, if, if, if one thing is your everything. If you have like one talent, one talent only, or one interest and one interest only, you might be interesting to you. And there's nothing wrong with that. Just don't expect to be interesting to anybody else. So, yeah. Interestingly enough, the song, if you listen to the lyrics of it, um, he's talking about a person who he wants to talk to, and even though he's you know, famous and, and rich, and he, doesn't have, he doesn't have the courage to talk to this person. Uh, the line right before this, he says, uh, I walk at pace behind you with a sound check. And you're, you're just the same as I am. So, he's, he's, so like, in other words, there's a person in front of him at the, at the sound check and they're going to the concert. He's walking behind them, and he talks earlier about how he wants to talk to this person, but he doesn't think they want to talk to him. He doesn't think that he's interesting enough. He says, "I'll watch the pace behind you with a sound check. You're just the same as I am. We're the same person, but what makes most people feel happy leaves us headlong into harm. So even if I pursue this thing, you know, maybe it's the wrong thing for me. That's life, though, man. What's the wrong thing for you? I can tell you afterwards." Go do a bunch of shit, come back and ask me, what was the wrong thing for me? I can tell you afterwards. Uh, you want me to predict it for you? Mm. Uh, I can't, I'm, I'm teaching right now. And that's why I'll be drinking coffee. Questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticisms, critiques? Listen to the Smiths. <laughs>